we both have access by one spirit unto the father that is to say the same way jesus has access we have access if the father cannot say no to jesus the father cannot say no to me if the father cannot ignore christ he cannot ignore me if christ has a 24 hour attention with the father i have the same look at it he says for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father same way jesus has access i have access what jesus can do with the father i can do why christ in you he's in you i say he's in you who is in you so what cannot happen to christ cannot happen to you he cannot be stranded you cannot be stranded he cannot fail you cannot fail he cannot be denied you cannot be denied he cannot be rejected you cannot be rejected why you are accepted in the beloved somebody shout that's who i am you're a family member of the household of god look at it in verse 19. now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of god somebody shout i'm a citizen of the household of god you didn't you didn't hear what you just said say i am a citizen of the household of god say i'm a member of the family so what any family member can enjoy i have equal rights and i'm in a funeral that jesus too is a family member we are fellow citizens we are not inferior citizens we are not junior citizens we are fellow citizens of the household of god we are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of god so whatever is provided in the household, every member of the household is a partaker. So if Jesus cannot be sick, I cannot be sick. If Jesus cannot be poor, I cannot be poor. If Jesus cannot be rejected, I cannot be rejected. If the father hears Jesus always, the father hears me always. If the father cannot say no to Jesus, the father cannot say no to me. Why? We are fellow citizens. Hallelujah. Redemption is sweet, man. An understanding of what Christ has done can, can keep you for the rest of your life in praise and worship. It's because people have not understood what Christ has done. That's why believers are full of prayer requests everywhere. When you understand what Christ has done, you don't have prayer requests. The only thing you have is thanksgiving. Because there's nothing Christ will do for you that he has not done. The problem is not Christ doing. The problem is you not knowing. Once you know that the communication of your faith may be effectual by the epignosis of every good thing that is in you. Where? In Christ. How many things are in you? All things. And what are those things like? Are they good or bad? What is in you? Good? What is in you? What is in you? What is it like? Good or bad? Are you sure? Is sickness good? So sickness is not in you. Is poverty good? So poverty is not in you. Is failure good? So failure is not in you. High blood pressure, is it good? So it's not in you. So you don't acknowledge it. The only thing you acknowledge is the good things that are in you. Because the only thing that is in you are the things that are in Christ. So what is in Christ is in you. And what cannot be in Christ cannot be in you. You are in him justified. He is in you glorified. You are bone of his bones and flesh of his flesh. Fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Can I hear a powerful amen? That amen is not powerful. Can I hear a power city amen?